So two questions that have popped up quite regularly recently in the last few months uh, for EdTracker users is one, does it work in DCS World? Can you show it to us in DCS World? Uh, the short answer is yes it does, um, so we'll show you that. Uh, the second one is all about getting what I call pseudo six degrees of freedom out of uh, EdTracker which is only a three degrees of freedom device. I did do a video about this specifically for Cliffs of Dover um, but what I'm going to do is kind of do a generic one that should apply to pretty much any game where you want it. Now, to clarify what this means, so Ed Tracker is a three degrees of freedom device, and what that means is it tracks rotational movement of your head, so so this kind of look, looking up and down, left, right, and cocking your head sideways. But it doesn't track lateral movement, yeah, this kind of sideways movement or forwards and backwards or up and down. Um, the hardware can't do that. Lots of people ask us, surely it must be possible to make it do that. It's not. Not without adding uh, some external point of reference, uh, which then makes it the same as kind of track IR, you know, something like that. So um, so the hardware itself is only three degrees of freedom. <clears throat> and a lot of people go, oh, well, that's it, I'm not interested. I need six degrees of freedom in my games. Well, you can sort of get it. And that's why I term it this pseudo six degrees of freedom and what I'm going to do is show you some techniques using a third-party product called open track which emulates track IR I'm going to show you how to set that up to get you a kind of six degrees of freedom experience in game and this can apply to DCS but but it can apply to anything you know uh, anything where you want to the common example is you know you want to be able to look around something uh, you want to be able to look over the edge of your cockpit and stuff like this yeah so you can set it up uh, however you want um, so uh, we're going to go over that. Now I'll start off with the basics first. So we're just going to have a quick look at how you set up Ed Tracker first, uh, then how you need to configure Open Track, and then we'll go in game and show you what it looks like. So the basics. Um, here we are in our Ed Tracker UI. I'm using a Pro. The same uh, procedure applies for um, DIY users. Um, let me just move this cable. It's getting in the way of it. Um, so the important thing is that we have your and pitch scaling to one and the res response mode in linear not exponential yeah linear mode one one on your and pitch scaling that's very important um, the smoothing I've got uh, the smoothing is kind of like filtering yeah you can do filtering in open track you can do filtering in here in smoothing it's completely up to you but don't do it in both places yeah I've got some smoothing on in the hardware um, I've got that set to 80, uh, so I'm not going to use any filtering in Open Track. But that is ultimately it for the Ed Tracker UI setup. Yeah, you just need that. I'm assuming the device is calibrated and level and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so that's looking level there, no problems. Uh, so fine. So we're done with the Ed Tracker UI. So on to Open Track then. So um, the, the most basic stuff, obviously input, choose joystick input. Uh, Ed Tracker basically just thinks it's a joystick. Um, so click the little hammer and choose Ed Tracker Pro here or Ed Tracker 2 if you've got a DIY device. Um, X, Y and Z are disabled uh, and the your pitch and roll axes you want to map to axes 2, 3 and 4. Uh, that's on a Pro, it might be different for Ed Tracker 2, I'm not entirely sure, but um, it might not be 1, 2 and 3, put it like that. Um, so yeah, for Pro users, Ed Tracker axes 2, 3 and 4 for your pitch and roll. Um, output. Uh, I've got free track 2 uh, chosen here. Again, you click the little hammer for the settings. You can change what the interface is. You can either use free track or track IR or both. I tend to use, set it to use track IR, hide free track. Some games are different, are fussy. It's kind of up to you really. See what works for your the game that you're trying to use it with. Um, um, filter, as I said earlier, I've got that not set in open track because I've got it set in the hardware on Ed Tracker, but you can enable a filter here, Excel a filter and whatnot if you wish. Um, now we come on to the important bit, uh, which is going into options. Uh, then if you go to output, a couple of things that are important here. The translation compensation, you want to make sure that is not enabled, so untick that if it's enabled. Uh, so we have that unticked. Now when we in this output remap section the first three are fine you want your to your pitch to pitch roll to roll but here's what we're doing now that, that gives us this pseudo six degrees of freedom so for lateral for X what I'm going to do is I'm going to map that to roll the reason if you think about it is quite obvious if you're looking around something 
you don't realistically slide your head very linearly across like this do you you kind of look around like that so what I'm doing is I'm using the roll that's measured by the head tracker to map to lateral movement instead so I'm saying for your uh, x-axis use the roll source from head tracker to control that um, then for Y and Z I'm going to use pitch now the reason for this is what I want to achieve is I want to try and as I look down into the cockpit I want to zoom in and I want to move my head closer down into the cockpit so I can look at those uh, dials and gauges so I'm mapping pitch to the Y and Z axes as well as pitch yeah so you can see here we've got X to roll Y to pitch Z to pitch okay so set those all will become apparent just hang in there with me stay there with me um, right then now you're going to what I would do is I would click the start and then click mapping so that you can see these in live you can tweak them live you've got a little dot that represents where you're being measured um, and this is where it all comes down to personal preference but you're just gonna have to tweak these curves to a point that kind of is convenient for you yeah uh, I'm gonna recenter my device just to be on the safe side so here you can see for your I've got maximum you're set at about 30 for me so that's the point when I'm sitting down comfortably where I can st I can just see the screen still out of the corner of my eye yeah and that's why you want this bit here set at the top for wherever is good for your positioning the size of your screen all these kinds of things yeah uh, same applies for pitch you know as you go up whatever you're comfortable with as being the maximum set it there so for me it's just below 30 uh, roll I've tweaked down a bit um, you can, would normally have that up quite high but we don't really need a lot of roll movement in this um, now for the lateral movement remember this is not mapped to X this is mapped to actual roll here so I've got a I've got that kind of curved up to 20 um, I'm gonna get run with that for now and kind of see how that feels um, with Y I've got this split so I've got the asymmetric mapping button ticked and this means you can set different curves for each side of center yeah so you can go different top different down so I've got no Y movement which is raising your head up yeah I've got nothing in the top half but as I pitch down you can see I want my head to physic to, to virtually move down as I pitch down so I've got a, a slight line in there on the lower half uh, and the same goes for Z so I don't want to be doing any zooming as I'm looking up I don't want my z view to zoom in as I look upwards but I do want it to zoom in as I go down so I tick that asymmetric mapping uh, and I introduce a little bit of zoom as I go down there look you can see okay right that'll do for there let's uh, launch the game uh, you can I've got the luxury of being able to put it on another screen and kind of tweak it while we're in game um, but obviously uh, if you've just got a single screen you can still alt tab out uh, to that mapping window and tweak things but it's easier to, to fine tune it with the game up and running and you can you can set it how you want so uh, without further ado let's get DCS launched and we can show you how it looks in that as well okay so here we are in game we're in the um, the freebie the SU25 um, and you can see the basics are all working yeah um, so I can look up and down and you've got a zoom coming in here but this kind of needs fine-tuning um, you can see the pilot's head is kind of headbutting the uh, the head-up display there uh, but left is fine I can look all the way around uh, and up that's good I'm happy with that uh, right then so we want to refine a bit of the uh, the, the kind of roll movement yeah so I've turned the roll down I've reduced the amount of roll I don't actually want my head rolling in game that much I want more of a slide so I've I've tweaked that down to about a third to about 50 at its extreme um, X movement is on roll and I've got that maxing out at about 20 that is actually as much as the game lets you move your head yeah it won't I can't put my head any further out than that it won't let me um, so that's fine that's kind of maximum head movement and you can see I can now kind of peek around the uh, the head up display and look look forwards around the nose um, the game automatically tweaks my head sideways for looking behind me. Uh, Cliffs of Dover didn't do that 
you had to add that in but um, um, DCS does that for you it applies a bit of common sense and says why would you want to stare at the back of your chair anyway uh, okay so we're fine with that um, why I've got turned uh, into zero at the moment so we've got no vertical movement at all now what I'm going to do is because we're hitting that that head up display there as I tilt forward uh, I'm going to turn the asymmetric mapping on for Y and I'm going to introduce some downward movement hopefully let's just tweak that da -da 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 -da. there we go that's at about 10 so now as I tilt forward my head comes down in the game and I can look at all these dials that's much better much more useful okay good and we can tweak this if, if you know you, you can set this however you want so if that's too much zooming in fine you can change it it's up to you but that's the beauty of the open track system is you can uh, set it how you like so the zoom uh, again that's maxing out about there that might be more zoom than is really necessary I don't know and let's uh, let's take it for a spin here we are up in the skies and you can see now we can do this kind of leaning around the cockpit kind of check out through those windows if we need to sometimes it's useful if you've got targets kind of obscured by parts of the cockpit uh, but it's also useful for checking kind of down here checking dials gauges So hopefully that's shown you how you can configure open track and ed tracker just to get a kind of, as I term, pseudo six degrees of freedom um, in games like DCS. But that'll apply to anything you want to set it up to. So War Thunder, uh, Armor, Armor 3, you know, stuff like that. Same approach. You just set those settings how you want to modify those curves to be to your preference. But that's the essential idea of what we're doing. Uh, in order to trick it to, to, to kind of have six degrees of freedom or five degrees of freedom. Um, so there we go. Uh, that's it. I hope that was useful. And uh, yeah, see you later.